Blog Talk Radio. Do you see it? Introducing No Holds Barred Combo on Reality TV Favorites. Like Big Brother. Survivor. And the Amazing Race. And I'm about to tell you why. Entertainment on this way. Got get real LOL on play. I would listen any day to things these men and women say. It won't be too long. Podcast is coming on. Get real LOL. They really there what we all want. Let me tell you that I am a fan. Big Brother really intrigues me. I listen because they understand and said what really needs be. You two will believe me. If they can't explain the time that they are having on discussing these shows daily. Get real. Welcome to Getting Real Uncensored. Hopefully I have Spencer with me. Spencer? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. And Shady, yes, you there? You. Yes, I am. Oh, good. I hear a big echo, but I'm good now. Hey, Spencer. Hey, what's going on? Not much. It's Shady. Hey, what's going on, Shady? Nothing much. A long time no oh. talk. So, yeah, I know. I know. How's, it? how's life? Good. So how's everybody doing tonight, guys? Everybody's good. I'm good. I yeah, just want to welcome everybody to um, to Get Real Uncensored. I'm Cammy, and I'm joined by my host. Go ahead, guys. Hi, this is Spencer. Yep, and I am Shady. <laughs> now, do you guys do you guys hear an echo? No, uh, a little bit of echo. I, I hear, hear none. I wonder why I'm getting an echo. Well, it could be that uh, uh-huh. maybe because some of us are on your account, so you might get an echo. <laughs> well, last time nobody got an echo. Oh. Well, echo, echo, echo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we're here. We're talking reality uncensored. We got Spencer from BB15 here. We got Shady. You know, this is our first episode. I don't want to welcome everybody. It's our new Black Talk radio station, so bear with us with any technical issues. But, you know, Shady's a pro at this, so he's going to help out. Right, Shady? Yes, I am. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we got a pro. Thank God. And we oh, got Spencer from BB15 here, which is fantastic. I mean, I've talked to Spencer a few times. I know Shady has. Yes, I have. And it was a very yeah. good interview. Yeah. Yeah, we've had, uh, had some good interviews for both of you all, so. And I'm sure Spencer's, you know, answered every question and everything else. So hopefully we can make it a little yeah, I mean, fun and a little lighter and crazier. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I'm up for whatever. People want if they got some questions, I'm glad to ask, answer whatever. So. Well, I'm I'm here for support, and also I'm going to be contro- uh, looking at the switchboard, bringing on any callers that it come on. So, guys, okay. if you want to call in? The number is 347-327-9114. So feel free to call in, come in the chat room, chat. The chat room is filling up. And let me let Cammy and Spencer speak. Thank you, Shady. Yeah. Thanks, Shady. Appreciate that. I wish I didn't have such a bad echo. It's horrible. Is it bad? If I'm out of my end, I'm good. I I just don't understand it. Let me try to lower my volume. Okay. Okay, well, I still have it. I'm just going to have to go with it. 
Okay, Spencer. All right. Rather than have the normal uh, start off questions, you know me. I'm going to start off with something fun and out of the box. Let's do it. I know I know Marilyn's there, but we're going to play pretend game here. Okay. All right. Here we go. If you were a single available man at the current moment, (laughs) and your doorbell rang right now, and it could be any BB female from BB one to BB fifteen seasons. Who would be at the door? Okay. Any female from BB1 to 15, if I was a single available man, who would I pick? Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Who who would I pick? Um, you know what? I'm tempted to say uh, Jen Johnson from uh, BB8. Wow. Yeah. Any particular reason? Maybe in the unitard. <laughs> well, I mean, she's hot. I mean, you ask me, like, you know, I mean, yeah, what do you want me to give you? Like, she's super hot, uh, you know. So that's that's all the reason I need. Oh, there you, you go. Want, you just want to see her in that yeah. unitard art again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, give me a break. I'm like, yeah. No, should I do? I really need to explain myself further. <laughs> now, what do you think about the whole when she was in the red unitard and the evil dick thing? Uh... What, like, what do you mean, like, for example, like, just when, like she, was, when she was in the unitard? And, and, like, poured iced tea oh, over her head, the cigarettes. We always put iced tea over it. Yeah, you know, I, I, I rewatched season eight, like, uh, maybe when we watched it, like, a couple weeks ago. And, you know, she she didn't even react to that. Like, it was really kind of funny. Like, I'm not sure how I would have reacted, but it was really kind of cool that she kept her composure. And, uh, you know, Jenny gets a kind of... Uh, I don't know, just kind of like a shitty reputation or whatever, just because if people got really upset with her, um, I don't know, her pettiness over crying about the picture or some of that kind of stuff. But she was a really good competitor. I mean, she's won more competitions than I did playing the game. And, uh, you know, she she stayed calm. She really didn't get that worked up. She, you know, she she really could have been, I don't know, she wasn't a terrible player at all. So Jen's, Jen's cool in my book. She's far from a terrible player. She's Like I said, she's a... She she did some did some cool things on the show. No, she wasn't a terrible player. No, no, not at all, not at all. Yeah, she won several competitions. She made deals, you know, when she needed to, and uh, she wouldn't there just to be pretty, and uh, you know. So, but that's kind of what she's remembered for, oddly. Well, that, now, that, Spencer, you know. do you see the chat box where you could like talk to people? Chat box, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I see it. The, yeah, I see it. Were they asking questions and stuff? Um, I'm trying to stay with it. So yeah, I'm I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm still really logged in. All right, I just wanted to make sure. Am you I can looking see at it. the right one? Yes. If somebody asks me a question, I'll uh, I'll, I'll get I'll get on it for sure. Okay. Just so. want to make sure you get to see it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spencer, uh, let me ask you this, Spencer. Was there what at what, what point that? did you know, besides the obvious of someone telling you, at what point did you know in your gut, hey, I got a real shot of being on Big Brother? Oh, uh, this is, I say this is something that I've talked to my own about recently. It's like I knew from my very first interview, from the live audition, like after that went well and I got the uh, the next little interview. Like I knew from then on that I was, I was in. Like I never had any doubt. I told, I told, I was like, you know, baby, I'm gonna screw around here and I'm gonna get on this damn show. I was like, and then it's gonna be, it's gonna be on, you know. And uh, she said, yeah, I know you're gonna get on it. You know, like my whole family, like they, they knew from. I told them from the very beginning that I was gonna get on the show, and they pretty much knew it too. So wow. it was almost like something that was just, yeah, predestined. So. So, uh, Sandy, that's what made me so sure. You know, I just have, like, a feeling. I don't know. It's like, you know, you know I don't know. Like, you know, if you, you know, sometimes you kind of trust your mind's eye. Like, you can, like, see yourself in the future doing something. Like, it seems like it will really happen. And sometimes you don't see yourself at all. Like, it just seems, like, way out of uh, out of the norm or out of something that's in the realm of something that will happen. Well, this is, this, this is something, like, I just saw me doing. Like, it just felt like it was absolutely going to happen. It wasn't... Uh, you know, it wasn't really any second thoughts to it. I mean, I really started preparing, uh, not physically. I should have ran a little bit more and worked out. But, like, I started, like, right. kind of getting my affairs in order because I auditioned fairly late into the casting process. 
And uh, so it, the ball rolled very quickly for me. So I auditioned, I think, April 20th. Right. And uh, so within within just two, within less than two months, I mean, I was, you know, away. So That's great. Now yeah. I want to switch tables here yeah. to Shady. Shady, you there? Yes, I am. I'm always All here. Right, honey. I want to ask you the same question, but kind of in a dis- different context. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, here we go. If you could interview any female from BB1 to BB15 that you haven't already, who would it be and why? That's easy. Natty from Season 9. Wow, that was quick. Simple as that. Natty from Season 9. She is truly one of the uh, sweetest, kindest, most beautiful, fun, loving, just kid-like spirit, and I, I want to interview her. I'm actually... All the fans, and uh, now you said BB1 through 15, so that's not counting Canada. My answer would have been different if you said Canada. Oh. But now, Canada, I have a different answer, but BB1 through 15, it's definitely Natty. Canada. Uh, Tala. 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 Yeah, Tala's cool. Yep. Yeah, Tala, she, man, she's, a, she's like a firecracker, man. Tala's cool. I hope oh, you yeah. get an interview. Uh, yeah. I, so, uh, Sandy asked on here if the house was bigger or smaller than I thought. It was actually a lot smaller than I thought. Um, it's kind of weird. So um, once you're in it and you start, like, I don't know, uh, you, you, you're around one corner and you, before too long, I mean, just a few steps and you're, you're you know, looking at the bathroom. Like, yeah, I don't know, in my mind, I expected to have to walk farther between, you know, rooms or just something. I don't know, but it was, it was smaller than I thought. It, it was. Like, when I watched it, too, it just se- it seems smaller and it just seems weird that it's not like BB America. You know what I mean? Like the same house that you're familiar with. But then yeah. once you start watching it, you know, you get used to it. Yeah. So, well, I'm pumped up about uh, – they've been just showing some promos for uh, BB Canada, too. Uh, I've been watching – some people post stuff on Twitter and, uh, you know, links to YouTube videos and stuff with a little bit of, uh, you know, BB Canada 2 teasers. And uh, I'm getting really excited for that. I think everybody's getting excited about BB Canada. You know, if they didn't watch it live, I think a lot of people are watching it online – or wherever they can yeah. find it, um, because yeah. obviously BB people are addicts. We all know this, and we'll get whatever yeah. we can take. So everybody's just like, eh, I'll watch Canada. And then you watch it, and you realize yeah. it's good. So it, it's growing up the charts. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I remember one of the big topics of conversation in the uh, Big Brother 15 house was Big Brother Canada and uh, how good it was. And everybody everybody went on about it, how good of a season uh, Canada 1 was. So. So I'm hoping Canada 2 has got some big stuff in store. I'm ready for it. I see Mother. a couple of people asking the number to call. Can you? Um, hmm. It's 347-247-9114. So, and they're also adding after, an after show of BB Canada 2 this year with uh, yeah. Gary and Peter. Yeah, Gary and Peter, absolutely. Oh, That's shit, cool. I think I gave the wrong number out to call. All right, guys, for everybody to call in, it is 347-327-9114. It is 347-327-9114. Okay, go right ahead. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cynthia calling you out. Yeah, you did. Now, let me ask you guys a question. No, I, I, know, sh- I know Shady knows about it. Spencer, have you been hearing about the new show debuting tonight, Opposite Worlds? Oh, I've got to set the DVR. Yeah, I'm pumped about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't wait. It actually starts at 10 p.m. Eastern, right, after, well, if, right tonight, so it'll be cool. Yeah. Shady, tell, yeah, tell me about it. it. Well, Opposite uh, World is pretty much, it's it's like Survivor versus Big Brother, <laughs> to be honest, because one half of the uh, well, island, wow, one half the, uh, of the competition is like caveman error, Survivor error, you're on an island or dirt, and you have to... Fend for yourself, fend for your own food, fend for everything. But the other yeah. side is like a Big Brother slash real world, but futuristic, uh, futuristic type house where everything's pretty much given to you. And like it's it, 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 the set design from the previews is amazing. It'll be definitely interesting to see. And the, as I'm talking about the up and the commercial just came on. <laughs> they actually say it's oh, like cool. Stone Age versus Future Age. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. So, 
you know, I like anything, any competition. I hope there's a, uh, I hope it's not real campy, which I think on sci-fi it's, it's got a possibility of leaning that way. But uh, honestly and truly, like I hope it's it's a game that there's a lot of strategy to. So I like uh, like a survivor when they had things like Redemption Island and like uh, who you give the immunity idol to or the, the clue to that kind of stuff when when they really uh, make, you know. Uh, add things that cause a whole lot of strategy in a game. That's really what I dig. So I hope that plays a big role. Uh, I just want to say that a little disclaimer that my answer for Nanny earlier was because I have certain guests already scheduled coming up. So <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> already scheduled. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Okay, we have somebody calling in, so let's bring them on the line. Hi, you're on the air with Cami, Spencer, and Shady. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can. Hi, Spencer. Hey, how are you doing? Who is this? My name is Kelly. On Twitter, I'm Blackberry. Okay, cool. Right on. Right on. Nice hearing from you. What's going on in there? Well, I had a comment and a question. My comment okay. was that I really enjoy Marilyn on Twitter. I really love okay. how she interacts with everybody and answers all our questions. And you got a real good yeah. catch there, so you're a smart guy. Thank you very much. She's wonderful. My question was, I know that, um, sadly enough, you lost your railroad job that you really loved. And um, uh-huh. I know that, you know, that must have been hard. My grandfather also worked for the railroad. I wondered if you were job hunting or if you decided to go back to school and try a different vocation, or if you were going to try to get on a different railroad? Well, actually, that's a, that's a cool question to, to call and ask. I'm not really job hunting right now. Um, I've got a rent house that I'm trying to get remodeled, and uh, whenever I get it renovated, I'm going to get rented out and try to uh, you know, use that as additional income. Plus, I'm drawing railroad unemployment right now, and uh, I don't get through it for very much longer. But until I get this rent house done, I'm kind of just taking it easy and kind of getting back to the, you know, the real world, world so to speak. Um, I do have some other opportunities that I'm thinking about pursuing um, outside of uh, you know, the railroad or any kind of transportation industry. And I do, I would like to eventually get my master's degree. I have a degree in writing and history uh, from University of Central Arkansas here in, uh, in Arkansas. Um, and I've thought about getting my master's degree, but until I know exactly what kind of field I want to head into, I don't want to just start that type of higher education. Um, but I'm really just kind of coasting right now. Um, it's really, this this house is very therapeutic because I just get in there and, you know, I take something that looks terrible and I try to make it look nice. And, uh, you know, I really have a, lot of, a passion for that and I enjoy that. So the the job hunt is not so, there's not a lot of stress. Uh, you know, I won, won some money on the show and I had some money in savings and I, I live below my means anyway. So like my house payment's not ridiculous and, it's really nice just to kind of have. I kind of feel like I'm a kid at summer break, just kind of chilling. So, well, <laughs> okay, that's you. your question. Thank you Thanks, for answering Kelly. my question, and tell Marilyn we love her on Twitter. I sure will. Thank you so much. She's a sweetheart. She'll be glad to hear that you said that. Have, have a good night. Thank you. Good night, Kelly. I have a question that a few people ask me. Um, what? They want to know when are you going to make Marilyn an honest woman? <laughs> well, like uh, you know, we don't really we don't really ever talk about marriage or anything like that. Ah, really come on. She doesn't. No, she doesn't. And she's cool. Um, you know, we love each other, and we uh, we're faithful and loyal to each other. And I don't ever make any decision that uh, puts her best interest in jeopardy. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm good with I'm good with money. I respect her and take care of her and love her and her family and love the, everything she does and support everything that she wants to pursue. Um, but we don't really talk about getting married ever. Um, one day I'm sure we will, but she's not pressuring me. Uh, that's not really kind of her style. Um, but you know, we love each other, and neither of us really. We're kind of those. Uh, at least I am. I'm like, you know, the institution of marriage, I don't need a piece of paper to say I'm married. You know, I'm kind of that school of thought. But, you know, her grandmother is not, so I'm sure they would like to see us get married at some point. Now, neither so. one of you have ever been married before, Spencer? 
No, no, we've never been, neither of us have ever been married, and uh, we don't have any children. So. Okay. Well, you know, I had to ask that question for all the ladies out there because no matter how patient and she doesn't care, she's a, a girl, a woman, and I'm sure, mm-hmm. you know, she thinks about it, and we wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's very nice of you to ask. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mm, oh, okay. <laughs> now, two people, um, I want to bring this up real quick. Rick, in our uh, Get Real LOL Facebook room, posed this question today, and I wanted to get you uh, both of your opinion on it. Do you yeah. consider Saturday Night Live a reality show? Well, hell, well, I mean, no, hell no. What kind of question is that, Rick? It's not like doing it. No, it wasn't Rick. It was Shady. No, no, it's a sketch comedy. It's skit. It's a skit. It's sketch comedy. It's uh, sorry, Rick. That's like saying that. No, it's like in the in the if you if you accept that in the same vein, you have to say that theater is reality TV. Oh, true. I guess I didn't put it that way. It was actually me that posed the question. (laughs) Come on, Shady. (laughs) No, because it's it's live. It's real. It's I mean, you, Jimmy Fallon cracks up half the time when he was on it, so you can't get more reality than that. <laughs> well, so I had to ask. It is, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, it is live. I mean, like, as, as in, you know, it's yeah. It, it, in, in the inability to edit it, I think that you can could classify it that way. But we all know that that reality TV is is uh, very edited. True. <laughs> I was just thinking about the so, live factor. Kind of like yeah, that big brother so life. I would, love, I would love to. I would love to participate on a show where, you know, I don't know, like Saturday Night Live. Like I'd love to do kind of sketch comedy and that kind of stuff. Just have the opportunity to kind of go out and be goofy for an hour, hour, hour a week. You know, with my friends, like that whole crew at Saturday Night Live and like uh, Second City, the productions that they do. I think that uh, would be an awesome type of environment to let your comedy and your uh, routine be fostered in. Uh, because those people, I mean, like, it's it's no uh, it's no mistake that the, the greatest, uh, at least theatrical comedians that of our of the past thirty years or longer have come out of have been funneled through those two establishments. That's pretty that's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now, who is your favorite current cast member? Current cast member? Uh, I don't know. I don't watch it anymore. Okay. I don't know my favorite. Yeah, my favorite current cast member is Cecily Strong, who's actually at the desk with uh, Seth Meyers for Weekend. Oh, yeah, dude, okay, like, I don't know the chick's name, but she is funny, and I watch her on there all the time. Like, there is, um, she does a skit where she talks, kind of like, a, almost like a Valley Girl type thing. It, it really it reminds me of the, uh, when uh, Sandler and Farley and Spade dressed up like the girls at the mall, like the Gap Girls. Okay. Kind of reminds, me, reminds me they talk like that is when Anna Hathaway was on there. They did that skit with her talking. But anyway, she's really funny, man. Like I, I think she's great. I always thought Christian Wig was funny. Yeah, they, they've had a yeah. lot, like you said, a lot of funny people come through uh, come through that show. So it's been cool. Yeah, they do. They do. Like um, I'm not a really a, a Fallon fan, and I definitely don't like Seth Meyers. So really, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't like any of those two dudes. Like, Fallon is, like, okay, but, like, and he's got some talent. And the thing is, is like, he's, you know, he's handsome like he really is. He almost kind of has a, uh, I don't know, like, there, there's a, if he would just chill the fuck out, he would almost remind me of, like, a Johnny Carson, like, as far as, like, very classic. Like, he looks like somebody that could, you know, that, that he's doing, he's in the right field to work for him. But, like, his bashful like oh shucks i'm just like a kid kind of comedy he does sometimes it's just goofy like you know he just i don't know he does that kind of oh shucks routine a little too much and i don't know it's like your humor should be based on i don't know being funny and confidence anybody can like you know do something silly and then like you know kind of kick their foot around and roll their eyes and kind of bat their eyelids a little bit like he does sometimes and try to get a laugh like the shy guy doing something goofy and i'm just not into that And Seth Myers, I mean, who gives a crap about him? Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I mean, he seems very pleasant. But, like, he's really not that funny. Um, 
you know, All right, guys, we have a caller on the line. We can ever, what? We have a caller on the line. Sorry to interrupt you, Spencer. Okay. All right. Let me let me bring on Carol. Like and you're on Seth Meyers' PR team. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> let me bring Carol on the line. Who do we have? Carol is on the line. Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi. I love hey. you guys' the show. <laughs> right on. Cool. Yeah, you're doing great. Um Spencer, uh, you know, you yeah. really should marry marry Marilyn. Just just putting yeah. that out there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I should. I should. And I agree with uh you on the um Saturday Night Live stuff. I don't think it's reality T V at all. No. So that's like uh that's like saying that uh Joe Joe Osteen is reality T V. You know. I watch him at Lakewood Church, but I don't really consider it reality TV. Right, right. I agree with you. And, you know, just like um, uh, there's a lot of shows out there that really aren't reality, as, but they uh, put them up as reality shows. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, see, that's like, okay, I'm going to take this in a weird direction. But one thing that Hugh Hafner always said that always pissed him off about his Playboy magazine is he gets lumped in with the uh, – the uh, you know the penthouses and the the hustlers, but it's his is in his opinion is very much more tasteful magazine. It's what to show you know beautiful women and a beautiful lot, not a sex object. Okay, well that's right. how I feel about Big Brother. Big Brother is a awesome reality based competition show. Okay, and it gets muddled in there with the Real Housewives of this and the Real Dumbasses of that and all this other shit. And then when you try to tell somebody, oh my God, you've got to watch Big Brother, they all go, oh I don't have time for that. You know, right? And I, and, I, and I think that even I think the disclaimer that they put on this season was stupid because they could choose the content they put on the show. There's nothing negative that was really uh, that really drove the game one direction or another necessarily. So I don't think that uh, some of the content needed a disclaimer. But I think that that right there pulled it off again into the category of I mean it might as well be on Bravo. You know, give me a break. Right. Yeah, I think so, and I, and I really, he just wimped out on that part when they put that disclaimer that? up. I think CBS wimped out when they put that they disclaimer totally did. up. Okay, listen, they know what disclaimers do. Just like the music industry found out in the late 80s when they put the parental advisory sticker on albums, what it does, it makes them fly off the shelves. So, like, we know that CBS knew what they were doing by doing that. People would tune in just to see the disclaimer, if nothing else. You know, right? And uh, they're not stupid. It was like boom disclaimer, and then boom do 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 do. Here's Aaron in the bikini. Here's Jesse in the bikini. You know, it's like oh, maybe we'll stay here and watch this. See what it's all about. I mean, like I hope it did. Yeah. I hope it pulled in awesome ratings. But you know, the thing is, is, is they knew what was going on. I mean, like I'm not I'm not some dude on the board of of CBS, but like I could tell you a good way to kind of get people to watch it. You know, especially yeah. Because everybody knows controversy is sales big time. So, oh, they were loving that controversy. They really were. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, it brought in the ratings. <laughs> so it's, it makes you wonder what they're going to do for sixteen. You know, if they go all star, will that be enough, or will they really want to shake things up? Well, you know, I think oh, next year. I seriously doubt they'll be the All Stars. Um, oh, you do? I think that the, what's that? You don't think it's going to be an All Star? I, I don't. I do not think it'll be All Stars. No. Wow, you're not the first all. person I, I heard think, that I from. I think it'll be something. I think it'll be. Well, everybody wants to. Okay, everybody you talk to, especially if you've ever played the game before, is probably going to say next season's going to be All Stars, and I'm going to be on it. But realistically, we all know they're going to be you know fourteen, fifteen, sixteen people. Out of all these seasons, I mean, how many of us are actually going to get back on there? Okay. So I think that because of this controversial season, the next year it's going to be something sappy. It'll be high school sweethearts versus, you know, you know, people who have been married for 25 years. You're just, you know, something. Just give them, just give, you know, if America with all these, uh, you know, uh, choir boys, all these, you know, Sunday school teachers teaching them to, you know, watch them on TV, then that's what they need to get. Absolutely. The game is uh, is set up in such a way that you could put anybody you wanted to in the in the game 
And just because of the parameters, it's going to derive strategy and scheming and backstabbing. And, you know, people will see that, you know, even even the, the goodest gold people will get in there and, and still give them the entertaining show. And uh, I think that's what they're probably going to do, is go something that's going to be a little bit more lighthearted, because they'll still get the show out of it. You know, I don't think they're going to lose that way. What's that? Don't you think Canada was that way, more lighthearted, and that's why a lot of people like it? Yeah, yeah, people like, people do like lighthearted, um, but I don't know, it's like, okay, it's like this, you know as well as I do, people like, oh, they're all fun and all friends and all getting along, everybody's great, but they also say, I want to see heads roll, what what people, who people, you know, what do your favorite house guests in the past, it's people that weren't nice, it's people that got stuff done. It's, it's people like to watch the head roll, the heads roll, you know, and uh, you know you can you can sit by and watch them all hug and cry every week as they send somebody packing, but you know it's it's no fun if it's all they all collectively agree on the person to go this week and that person's okay with it and they go home and they all shake hands and yeah. hug. You know you want somebody that's getting backstabbed, you want somebody that's getting lied to, you want somebody that's getting plotted against, and you want that person to be in such a bad position. And then they make a deal with the devil, and they pull themselves out of it, and they last another week. That's what you want to see. That's Big Brother. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you so, didn't I mean, see a lot like, of that in Canada, think, even you though can it was put, good. Yeah, yeah. But, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that, um, like, next year it will be weak contestants at all. I'm just saying that I think that, like, well, okay, you remember, like, they had secret partners and, uh, you know, just things like that. Like, I think it will be something that's going to start out – very wholesome and fun, exciting to watch. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, I'd yeah. like to see that. So, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, Survivor is doing, you know, Survivor is doing this brains, bronze, and beauty or whatever. And, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> that's okay. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I, I don't care what they call it. I'd watch it. You can pretty much call every season brains, bronze, and beauty. You know what I'm saying? Divided, <laughs> depending on just how the, how the tribes are divided up. I mean, it's really just kind of goofy, but. You know, whatever. I'll watch it. Uh, Mark Redhead, he does an awesome job. Oh, Probst, he's uh My problem with Survivor is that sometimes the Tribal Council, I just I just scream at the TV. I'm like, Probst, shut your mouth. You're telling too much, you know. I feel like he's just way to expose this stuff. I'd be sitting there just all, you know, clinched up, thinking Jeff is going to, you know, everything's working good until I get to Tribal Council, and Jeff is going to reveal my strategy to everybody else. <laughs> And I just, oh, I, I know. Just get so That's out. so annoying. Oh, my so gosh. Well, I'm going to get off the phone. Out. I really appreciate you talking with me, Spencer. It was great. Yeah. You're, I'm a big Absolutely. fan. Thanks, Thanks Carol. Carol. You guys take not care. Thanks, you Tammy. Thanks, Shady. Bye, Thank Carol. You. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. We have another caller on the line, Dana. So let me bring her on. Huh? Hey, Dana. Hey, hi, Shady. Hi, hi Spencer, Cammy. Hi, Dana. Hey, Dana, what's up? Hey, Sp- uh, Spencer, I also would like to say I uh, talk uh, chat with Marilyn on Twitter and uh, <laughs> hope, she's, hope she's doing better on Candy Crush. She was a little frustrated the other day. And Shit, hi, also, baby. Huh? Baby, I've got somebody calling into my show wanting to know about if you're popping doom bubbles. <laughs> she she's, I swear she's hiding playing it right now. Okay, continue to ask your questions, Dana. I'm sorry. Um, especially, I'm really enjoying this show. You're really good at this. Are you going to be doing this weekly? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do it. Uh, do a lot. Uh, somebody put Winnie Marilyn as a co-host. No, she couldn't do it not straight long enough. She'd be popping bubbles. Uh, no, I'd love to do it. Um, so yeah, I plan on on doing this uh, at least weekly, for sure. Okay. Oh, Good. Well, thank you. Well, I appreciate I, you. I appreciate your uh, vote of confidence there. Oh, it's that very was cool. Well, I, I'm enjoying the show. Thank you. Yeah, cool. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, Dana. You know, real quick, I just wanted to elaborate, I think, on Carol's Dana was, question. Dana was very sweet. I'm not, yeah. Yeah? Do you guys think, both when, of you, I think BB15 is the season that never ends. You know, it continues <laughs> on to social media and all that. Do you think yeah. it has tainted the way BB will be for the next whatever seasons? Uh, well, no, hold on. Say that again. Let me make sure I understand your question. Meaning, 
this meaning sounds after, intriguing and I want to answer correctly. After the controversy, this, after mm-hmm. the controversy and all the stuff that happened, once it's over, all the stuff on social media, it's like the season that never ends. Good or bad? Yeah, yeah. Do you think from I mean, now on, especially this upcoming season, they're going to take it in a totally different direction with, with casting? Sure, sure. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know about all that, but the uh, okay, the season will never end. I tell you this: I, I can just firmly assure that here in five years, somebody on Twitter will type in there. Hey, you're a big pervert and, you know, whatever, racist. I'm sure I'll get some hate. That's going to happen. I think uh, I heard, I know Marcella say that people will still think that you are your big brother persona even 10 years after the fact. They still talk to him about how stupid he was for his veto, you know, screw up and things like that. And, uh, you know, I think that probably to a certain extent, big brother 15 could be a whipping boy. Uh, in the future, for just if they want to say, you know, go, uh, you know, casting gone wrong or the season gone wrong or you know whatever, yeah, whatever. Cite us in your little goofball article that you write on the website that nobody reads. If you're still talking about it in five years like that, but I think that uh, for the most part, that you know the little sore asses that are upset for one reason or another that you know that they're that that it didn't end up how they wanted it to. Um, I think those shirts are going to be sore uh, for a long time, but I think for most people, it's, it's pretty much they're over. I think that they're excited that, big, you know, the, big, the real fans are excited that Big Brother Canada's coming up, too, you know. They're excited that Big Brother 16, when the new house guest gets announced, I mean, like this, uh, I'm kind of like a lame duck, you know. Like this outgoing house guest currency, it's not going to last very long. And uh, I think once the new cast is announced, people will get excited about the other strategies. To come yeah. up, what different people will bring to the game, and uh, I think that you know, it's just it's fresh, it's hard. I know to talk about, and uh, that's gonna go, that's gonna go away. After Big so Brother you don't think they're gonna change the way they 60. they recruit people at all, Spencer? No, hell no. Hmm. Well, hell on no. that well, note, Cammy and Spencer, we have Kathy on the line, so let's bring her up and see what questions she has. Okay. Oh. Hey, Kathy. Hello, Hello. Spencer. Hello, Spencer. Hey. I called you. I called you a while back on your phone that you posted. That was quite daring. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, right on. And I talked to you about, um, you know, how you changed my mind after the show. You know, you did like we were saying it was controversial, but I saw after the show that you're a humble and you really, you know, apologize. And I think you have a great heart. And we talked Thank about dogs. Ah. <laughs> yes. I'm the pug lady. But um, my question is, how's Murdoch doing? He is doing very well. Actually, I had a scare with him the other day. I had to oh, him, no. I got this vet, Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, he was like a Vietnam veteran. And uh, yeah. so when he says he's a vet, he really was a vet, and he's a vet. But uh, <laughs> Murdoch has got spinal and hip arthritis. So about oh. every six months, he gets just where he can almost can't walk. And see, this is the thing. Murdoch and I, like every morning I get up, when he, he needs to go potty about 5, 5.30 every morning, I let him out. He runs back in, he eats his food, and then he always wants to come and jump up in the bed and cuddle with me. Kind of, He wants to get under the covers and be next to me. Well, yeah. I can always tell when he needs a shot because he can't get in the bed anymore. Once he oh. can't jump up in the bed, yeah. So he couldn't get in the bed. He wasn't running in for his food. He was barely able to make it up these stairs on her back porch. And uh, I was so scared because mm. he'd never gotten that bad that fast before. It normally yeah. kind, of like it's kind of oncoming, but I was really scared that maybe he That's had something scary. worse than that. But yeah, but he got a shot and he's doing wonderful now. So he's yeah, the anti-inflammatories. I had a dog like that, and we they gave us anti-inflammatories, and you could see though their confidence. Like the first few days, he couldn't get in the bed, and it was just, you could tell the dogs like doesn't know what's going on. But he eventually yeah. was able to jump back up. You just think they need to rest a lot, you know? So yeah. Yeah, well, like, well, it was I, sad because I couldn't even like help him up because just to just to touch yeah. his hip and his back, he'd cry. Oh. He's a big baby, so he cries. Yeah, he's bigger too. How many pounds? Oh, yeah, he is. Is he about fifty uh, he's pounds? He's like seventy pounds, probably. He's like seventy, oh. sixty-five, seventy pounds. Okay. So. Well, I'm the one. I also told yeah. you my pugs are on BB1. It's part of the pug yeah. prank, and we. I was hoping they'd make a, another season with the dog, but we oh, could have really? Murdoch. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you guys YouTube the uh, Chiquita Challenge on YouTube, it's kind of grainy because it was BB1. They had a pug Chiquita, and our pug <laughs> rescue, I'm um, part of the pug rescue I was in L.A., and we brought about 40 pugs, including two of mine, and we left them in the backyard, and they had to find their pug amongst all the pugs. So right. we got to sit in the green room, and so I'm kind of part of the BB family. Oh, uh, that's so. cool, yeah. Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, so I wanted to share that and just say hi to Spencer again and just, you know, if people go on, go easy on the house guests because, you know, it, you know, I was even just, my husband, with, you know, with Spencer said a couple of things and then I just was like, man, you know, he's paid enough. He's apologized. There's only so much he can do, you know. That's right, Kathy. So, yeah, so good luck to you, Spencer, and thank you for talking to me again. Thank you, Kathy. And good to hear from you, you again. A, and you give a kiss to that Murdoch. I sure will. I sure will. All right. Okay, thanks, Cammy. <laughs> thanks, Daniel. Bye, Kathy. Thanks. Okay. You're right. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, Spencer, you got a lot of love out there, Spencer. Yeah, I know. That's I know. great. That's nice. Yeah, so it's it's so cool. Man, people calling all the time. Uh, they have either post a number or they just like hit me up on Twitter. And it's so nice to hear the people, um, you know, outside the game, right, and really get to know know me um, outside of just, uh, being, you know, a rival to, you know, one of their favorite house guests or just not liking, you know, the way I played the game or, or whatever. They kind of see me in, in the in the real world, in my own environment, and they know how I react and interact with people. And uh, they give me so much love. You know, it's it's nice. Uh, it's it's cool, when, cool, cool when the fans call, and uh, it's cool when to hear, to hear them, you know, talk about, you know, the funny things I did and how much they love me and that kind of stuff. And that always makes me feel good. But to hear somebody say that they used to have an ill opinion of me and now they, they've changed that, that uh, their tune, man, that right there just really, really makes makes all the yeah, difference. I, because, yeah. you know, and speaking about yeah, fans who love to call in and talk to you and just uh, and want to give their opinion, we have another caller on the line. So let's bring on, okay. uh, Sh- we have, let's bring on Shanna. Shanna, okay. like from Florida. Hi, Spence. How are you? Hi, Kim. Hey. How are you? Hi, love. How are you? I'm How's doing good. Good, good. It's doing good. We're going well. good. <laughs> um, Spence, I just want to say thanks. I know we talked last yeah. last week, and um, thank you again for yeah. for sending your stuff. And I'm glad you're going to be a part of our. Yeah. Event. Have you got the Have you got the package yet? No, and I'm still worried. Have you, okay. The weather and the mail. I'm so afraid everything's going to be delayed. Okay, okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll check that tracking number and make sure. It, I, I would I would have thought it didn't would have been there. Uh, probably not because of MLK Day, but I was assuming today. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. well, it, it's on the way. It's on the way. For it'll, sure. it'll be so, here. So uh, what you talking morning. about? Yeah, talk about the uh, talk about the fundraiser. I want to hear. I want you to be able to Definitely. say all that over the uh, over the show. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have the fundraiser coming up on Saturday. It's a bowl-a-thon, um, and a bunch of my friends put it together for us, and everybody's going to be bowling and having some food, and we're going to have a lot of vendors there. Um, we're going to have raffles and auction items, and the one table that I put together, of course, represents reality. I haven't named it yet, so I'll let you know when I name it. But um, okay. it represents reality, and I've got this stuff, uh, lots of stuff coming in from uh, BB15, and I have some BB11, and I have some BB14. I've got Survivor. We've got some soap opera stuff coming in. Um, so I'm really excited. So it's my own personal table, and I, I feel proud of it because I, I did it all on my own. Um, oh, good. But it's, it's basically based around our community. Um, this event was... Uh, sponsored and brought in by our friends in our community, and um, we submitted the flyers through Aiden's school. Um, so it's just all about this event is all about bringing friends, family, and community together this weekend. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. Oh, good, good. And that's I'm nice so to glad. be sponsored like to donate stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was glad to. I was glad to. Um, yeah, when. Uh, when when she reached out, I was absolutely glad to be able to to uh, to help. I mean, it's just wonderful, uh, you know. Wonderful, couldn't couldn't ask for the for you know, to raise money for a better cause. So anyway, that's uh, it's great that the the, the the community's pulling together and putting this fundraiser on, and I think it's going to be a huge success. I'm glad just to play a small part in it. Thank you. 
Thank you. And I'll take pictures and stuff and let everybody see um, how it turns Thank out. You. I really, so, yeah. Let you yeah, see I really how I, I, could, I put your stuff together. Cool. I, I can't wait to see it. I really wish I could go and see it in person. I know it's going to be I know. Be that event. would be awesome. Yeah, that would have been awesome. So. Yeah. yeah. Your stuff's going in a oh. shadow box, which is really cool because Spencer sent me more than one item, which I am so blessed to have. And, wow. Um, I love his little care package that he put together. So I'm excited because my friend gave me a shadow box and his stuff's going in the shadow box. So it's going to look really, really cool. So I'm excited about it. Oh, it's gonna be, that's going to be very awesome. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I can't it wait is going to be awesome. Yeah, please uh, tweet some pictures. I will. Absolutely. So, you want to say your absolutely. website, love? Yeah, um, if anybody's interested in following Aiden's journey, they can go to www.cure for Aiden. It's cure, the number four, A-Y-D-E-N. Um, you can go there to follow his journey, see his pictures, look at past fundraisers we've had, and um, get to know Aiden a little bit better through through his story. So I appreciate everybody uh, checking us out and um, helping our family. I appreciate it big time. Great, great. That's great. We're and you here know what? for I was you. Just thinking, I was just what? thinking about it. If uh, if if it would help too, just another thing to uh, to donate. You could tap up like a little coupon or something. And uh, mm-hmm. like I know I have this number I post that people can call me for free and talk. But if uh, okay. like if you want to do like a little coupon to where they can call me and like schedule like a like a twenty minute conversation or something like that, and they can just bid that just as an extra auction item. They can call and talk sure. to me and we can schedule the okay. conversation. That way, it'll be at somebody's convenience. And, uh, you know, just be an extra auction item out there. Yeah, I'll do that as a raffle. I'm doing that actually with Helen, too, um, because Helen offered a Skype session um, with a fan. So we're we're doing that for Helen, too. So that would be awesome. Yeah, I would love to do that. I would would love that. Yeah, great. Yeah, awesome. I think that'll be good. Yeah, and you're a pleasure to talk to, so thank you. (laughs) Oh, thank you very much. (laughs) So, hey, I I got Skype and a webcam today. So maybe that could be I could practice scapping with some poor soul <laughs> that's been kind enough to have to bid on an auction. <laughs> and like a guinea pig for me. Spencer, I'm sure you have a lot of fans out there, Spencer. <laughs> um, all right, so I will let you guys get back to show. Um but I have Raise to call a lot of money. And, and say a yeah, personal thanks. hello. Thank you. I hope so. It's uh it's been a long journey, so we need to get Back on the road of uh, of good things to come. And um, Aiden had his MRI today, so keep him in your prayers for that. Um, we get will. Yeah. hopefully positive results. I will. Week. Think positive. Hey, uh, yeah, absolutely, Shane. Y'all are definitely in my prayers. And uh, Maryland's too. I know that we've talked about it. And uh, you know, if it's just Thank any you. kind of like uh, consultation or any kind of like you know comfort at all, you know, um, I try to be a very positive person. And uh, and I believe I do absolutely believe that uh, you know that, that that you're a wonderful person. You're a, a like a uh, you know an exceptional person. And you know you got some big problems right now. You do have some big problems right now. The thing is, it's like you know you're not a normal person. You're just a, you're a large than life person. Like you can handle this. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Big God puts uh, God's he puts problems in, in your life, but uh, he also equips you with the tools to handle it. So. You know, preach, I'm praying for preach. you, and I hope, I hope the best for your thing. Oh, I love you. it. Yeah, I appreciate that, Spencer. Thank you. Um, it changes you. It definitely changes you, especially when it's your child. It it definitely sure. changes you. Of course. Um, and it, ha- it has made us stronger. And um, <coughs> I would love me. for you guys to, to meet Aiden because he's an yeah. amazing child, and he changes everybody he touches. Everybody Aww. he touches, he changes. He, just, he brings love. Everywhere, so, yeah, you know, I want to say too, real quick. You know, with the social media and uh, everything going on, social media isn't just for evil. I mean, yeah, social yeah. media yeah. can be for good as well. I mean, look here's Shana, and she has yeah. her story, and I'm sure social media has played a huge part into yeah. helping her, right, Shana? Yeah, um, the connections I've made on Twitter, um, the friends, just the support, you know, the friends right. caring about me, asking how he's doing, praying, um, just just all of that has just been really, really awesome. I've met a lot of amazing people. Yeah. That's great. And, yeah, it definitely helps. So nice. Well, Excellent. you'll be in our prayer, Shana, always. Well, I hope you raise tons of money. 
All the house guests out there, if you're listening or you know a house guest, get in touch with her. I'm sure at any time she could use anything. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a BB item, and I, I know we only have four days nailing left, so unfortunately it would have to be sent in priority at this point. But, um, you know, even something simple, a photo, autograph photo, or uh, a matchbox car signed with your name on it, you know, <laughs> something silly like that. But people get a kick out of stuff like that. And there is going to be a lot of children there, too. So, um, you know, they they love little stuff like that. But um, yeah. but thank you again. And, Spencer, it was so awesome talking to you again. And give that wife of yours a hug. Yeah. And, Tammy, I, I love you, Tammy. I love you, too. I love you. Mm. I'll talk to you on Twitter. And Shady, as always, hugs. Mm, hugs back. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Have a good right. night. Thank you. I, I, look, okay. I, I look forward to those pictures being posted this Saturday, okay? I will, Spencer. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah she is. Absolutely. She's an amazing mom and an amazing person. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I got to talking to her, you know, I got to realize, you know, that she is um, – and she's she's the kind of person to have in your corner. You know what I'm saying? A wonderful, wonderful woman. Oh, yeah. So we have another caller, but let me head to the screen room and find out who it is, and I'll be right back. Okay. All right, while okay. we're waiting, Spencer. Uh-huh. Did you ever hear of the game Marry, Shag, Kill? Uh, yeah, of course. All right, we're going to play Cammy's rendition. Okay. It's called... One date, get some butterscotch, or throw in the dumpster. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like you're setting me up for a lot of trouble. <laughs> Playing play a game called called One Date, Get Some Butterscotch, or Throw in the Dumpster. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll try to. Uh, I'll try to. to you know, I always have is. to add in the spice. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know what I missed, but before we get to why she's adding spice to everything, um. Let me bring on Shaylin. Okay. Hi, Shaylin. You're on with Cami, Spencer, and Shady. Hey, guys. Hey, Shaylin. Hey, what's up? I'm doing good. Good. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I still got, like, science stuff on the go, but that's about it. Okay. So, Just so you know, Shay Lynn is a huge is a huge Judd fan. She's the one that uh, won on our Facebook page, Get Real LOL Judd's Crown Signed. And oh, she's cool. just an angel. Well, excellent. Big a big Judd fan. How can you not be? Judd's a good guy. Um, I got a question for you, Spencer. Um okay. what do you think about Amanda and Gina Marie not being allowed to attend reality rally? Um, oh, the the 14-year-old hits the left hook. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a good question. I, uh, um, let me try to think how I want to answer this. It's like I this. would think first, Spencer. If I, if I had a charity, if I had a charity, I would be conscious of their image, of course. Um, if I had a charity and people wanted to donate money, I would take it, of course. Um... Do I think that they are looking at Amanda and Gina Marie uh, through a very blurred, obscured mi- microscope uh, for this? Absolutely. It's it's, it's insane. Um, okay, like if they want to show up, pay money, and help, donate, give money to breast cancer research, why in the world shouldn't they be able to? I mean, Amanda's got the RealMafia.com website, and she's kicking ass, and she raises money for uh, equality stuff. Gina Marie, when say she was a runner up for God's sake, she's got fifty grand. She wants to donate some of that money to really help, you know. And you know, they're not allowed to. That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm sure part of my anger about it comes because I've not even applied to do it yet, but I'm sure I would get the same rejection email, uh, which would be totally unfounded and bullshit. Um, I mean, hey, you know as well as I do, there are certain house guests that like to, you know, uh, tweet out or text out pictures of their dicks. You know, but they can still be worshipped as gods and re- or you know re- attend reality rally. Those people don't get you know snubbed. But somebody sweet like Gina Marie, you know, or Amanda. I'm not gonna call Amanda sweet. I mean, I'm teasing. She is outside that. She's very sweet. But uh, you know, that's why people love Amanda because she's not super sweet. She's Amanda. That's what makes her great. 
but uh, she should absolutely be able to. People would would come there just to see Amanda, just to see Gina Marie, and it's uh, it's ridiculous not to think so. The, the past season, the the current uh, season of Big Brother's House Guests would not be allowed to attend that year's reality uh, rally. I mean, it's just uh, it's just goofy. I mean, I guess she's got every right to run it how she wants to. But I think it's total bullshit. So I think that anybody that watches watch the show, Gina Marie is a sweetheart. And uh, I lived with her for 90 days. I mean, I would let her marry my brother. You know what I'm saying? She's a great woman. Uh, uh, I made the same way. Amanda, outside the house, you know, inside the house we were rivals. You know, naturally, we didn't, you know, get up and eat breakfast together every morning or anything. But uh, outside the house, she's just been a doll to me. She's wonderful. And uh, <laughs> she's helped me with several things, kind of getting me used to social media stuff and, you know, she sent me some cast photos that I could sign and give to people. She had extras. I mean, she's wonderful. Um, oh, that's nice. And to ex- exclude them, that's my opinion of Shaylin. That's crap. I mean, it's cool Judd gets to go but, and Alyssa, but, I mean, I don't think that's a really good representation of the, of the full cast for the people who want to show up and see Big Brother 15 cast members. Yeah, I think it's pretty ridiculous. It is. It really is. I, uh, Shaylin, how's that crown? You know, it's good. <laughs> you got that crown? I've had it on my head before. Oh, really? So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, 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 show now. But no, but no, hey, Shaylin, thank you so much for calling in and giving me the opportunity. Because I wasn't even thinking about that because I blocked it out of my mind. But to give the opportunity to talk about something that's total bullshit. And, uh, you know, it's like I want to help people, but only with other with who I deem to be good people's money. Well, we should just, you know, fucking uh, go through everybody's, you know, history when they donate money to, a, to their charity and only take money from quote, unquote, good people that their panel of board members decides is good. How you do that, you're not going to secure much breast cancer that way. Yeah, if it's like a show- reality. Uh, thing for all reality people, like everyone from every season should be allowed to go, no matter who they are. Yeah, I mean, from my understanding, you know, excuse my ignorance if I have her show shit fully, but like, it's like you got to pay to go. It's not like I can just show up and like steal the show. I'd be like, you know, hey, I'm doing my thing over here, and you know, run the show. That's ridiculous. You know, if you want to go up there to participate, go through all of the, you know, stuff that everybody else is doing. Smile, have fun. It's going to be good. Post for pictures, sign autographs, do whatever. It's going to be a great time to raise money for a good cause. And uh, to to not allow that is silly. I mean, I guarantee you, if you think for one second the GM Marina man don't have some just rabid followers, you're out of your mind. Because those people, people out there love those two women and would love to come meet them out there at Reality Rally and uh, keep them from having the opportunity to do so is uh, is foolish, I think. And they have a lot of fans. Hell yeah, yes, they have a lot of fans. And, and roughly so. Roughly so. Every every single fan is, is well well deserved and earned. So, you know, I mean, Gina Marie, everybody talks about you want to find somebody that plays a good game, you know, a good wholesome game or whatever. Like, I can't, I will, I'm not going to describe this. Gina Marie is every single move is wholesome. But I will say this she didn't lie. I mean, I've, I've never seen anybody play the Big Brother game and not lie. I mean, I think about it, her only lie in the house who was two lies I can think of. One was me and her final two deal. I know that was a lie. And then the uh, uh, line when she told McCray that the rings were fake and the said told her that. But other than that, man, she played. I mean, she didn't make deals that she didn't plan on keeping through to. I mean, that was really cool of her. And I, I, I really, my hat's off to her. I super admire that about her. But when you go to her and say, hey, Jim, how about we do a two-week deal for this, this, and this? And she'd be like, no, nah, man, I don't need that deal. It's good. When the, everybody else would be like, oh, yeah, sure, even if you don't hold the truth to it, she would make a deal that she didn't mean it. And I think that's awesome. That's one of the, reasons, one of the many reasons I love Jim Ray. Because right, I'm like Shay. a deal slut. If somebody was to come make a deal with me, I'm dealing left and dealing right. Just so you know, Spencer, Shaylin is 14. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any other questions, Shaylin? Uh, no, I'm good. Right. Good. Thanks for calling in, Shay. Yeah, welcome. thanks for calling in. Enjoy that crown. And okay. don't injure yourself anymore in karate, please. No promises. 
<sighs> Goodbye. Night. Okay, I have to I have to continue my game, okay? Okay. All right, here we go, Shady. You ready for the game? All right. Okay. Instead of Marry, Shag, Kill, we're going to play with Spencer Cammy's game called Go on a Date, Get Some Butterscotch, or Throw in the Dumpster. God. You had to bring up butterscotch. <laughs> I always do it, Spencer. He knows. Uh, All right, Spencer, so it's go on a date, get some butterscotch, or throw in the dumpster. And here are your choices. Jesse, Julie Chen, and Alyssa. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm thinking of there's like a Popeye quote. It says, I'm smart enough to know my stuff to leave well enough alone. Yeah, and, but it doesn't uh, apply I'm not sure here. That's the exact quote. But uh, I, don't, I think this is dangerous. All right. So it's going to day with, get some butterscotch trauma, throw in a dumpster. And my choices are Jesse, Julie Chen, oh, and Alyssa. And Alyssa. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's change throw in the dumpster because that is <laughs> violence against women to. I will. I would ignore her text. That okay, that's very good. Normal. That'd be much more mild. Okay. Let's say uh, uh, I would ignore Julie Chen's text. I would wow. go on a date. I would go on a date with uh, Alyssa, and I would get butterscotch from Jesse. There you go. <laughs> All right, Spencer. Thanks for playing. I'm so yeah, glad I wasn't yeah, asked that. I gave you a good honest round. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Shady. You're next time. Oh, brother. I'm oh, afraid what my I'm options will be. <laughs> you know, before... Uh, come on, you know the way I am. Oh, yeah, I do. And just think, you I can mute you if I wanted to. <clears throat> That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we go further, real quick, I, I just wanted to to take a minute to tell everybody, you know, about Get Real LOL. You know, this is obviously, we just got the Black Talk radio station, and it's being launched today, first time. But we also have a multi-level chat rooms, our own forum. We have a 24-7 interactive Facebook page where fans and reality stars interact. We have bloggers, contests, prizes. We give back to the community, and we do so much, and there's more coming. And everything is housed at our website, which is www.getreallol.com. When you have time, check it out. You know, we're hoping it to be a one-stop BB place where you can find most of your needs for reality shows. And I just wanted to put that out there for everybody. And thank you for the support. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this is this is, a, this is a great platform to be able to get on and, and talk and, and reach the uh, you know to reach the fan base and uh, so the, I, I think it's great. I'm glad well, that, you know, that people are listening thought, and, and, and interacting. Thought, I think things are going to grow and blow up. Exactly. I mean, especially be be time for everybody. But the thought behind it is, especially with the radio show. I mean, I want yeah. I want Shady to plug his radio show, and he will. And he'll be telling you about the blogs and stuff. But behind this one is, you know, why not have reality personalities host or guest host or be the subject of? And maybe the whole station could be about that. And maybe not. And we'll see how it goes. We're trying to piece it together as we go. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I definitely definitely am down for taking more of like a lead role uh, on this. uh, Oh, I know you are. I know you are. You know, know, I'm techno-dumb, so... uh, I guess people listening don't know this, but I about had a uh, a mental breakdown trying to get my Skype lo- locked in and my <laughs> microphone hooked up and working and all this kind of stuff. So once I get that rolling, I definitely want to take the reins a little bit more and open it up so that people can call in and, and uh, talk and and uh, just kind of all things all things anything. I thought BB Survivor pop culture. And, and you know what anything. I love, Spencer? You, know I mean? you have no filter. You're What's like that? me. You have no filter. I yeah. love that. Yeah. That's the word, you yeah, know, get real LOL uncensored. If you need exactly. me, no, no, no. I'm here for you. 
Oh, what yeah. That we is, need what Shady. Yes, yes. Yeah, Shady's a good man. Absolutely. He said Absolutely. if you need any help, so, he's there for you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. I know. I heard that. I'm going to uh, I'll keep that in mind as I navigate my way through these new uh, new toys I've got. I may have to and get just, hold of and Shady. And just so everybody and knows help. out there, you know, Shady is here helping us tonight and everything. But Shady is also now, he has his, uh, a page on our website. And he's going to be blogging. You want to talk about that, Shady, and your radio station? Yep, for sure. I'll, t- I'll talk about that. I won't take up too much time. But uh, for Get Real, Laugh Out Loud, I'll be doing a blog. It's going to be every every night I'm going to be watching a certain show, like tonight. It's going to be Opposite World. And I'll be watching that and then blogging it. Very uh, as Right after I get done watching the show, I'll be blogging about it. And it'll be posted the next day so everybody can read the review, the comments, the recap. So if you don't want any spoilers and you haven't watched it yet, don't read it till you do. But it will be it'll have my entire opinions and I don't hold back because I just did a blog on Vendor Pup Rules on uh Bravo T V and when yeah. I did my Shady's uh story reality uh wrap up roundup, I did not <laughs> hold back whatsoever. So feel free to take a look at that. It's at the website. Uh-huh. And I also host my own show, with Spencer, which Spencer has been a guest on. Uh, it is Shady Starry Nights, which is every Friday and Sunday nights. Friday nights, it's at 6 p.m. Eastern. Sunday nights, it's at 8 p.m. Eastern. And this week, uh, I have John and Eric from Your Reality Recaps coming on. Uh, Saturday night at, at 6 p.m., I have Andrea Bogart from General Hospital coming on. And then Sunday night, I have Jesse Kowalski from Big Brother 15, coming on oh. at 8 o'clock Eastern. There you go. There you go. That'll be good interview for sure. That's cool. So, uh, ask her ask her about, uh, write this down now. Get you, you got your pen handy, write this down. Uh, ask her about her Richard Gere impression. <laughs> I am actually writing that down. I, I want to hear that. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah, just ask her about her Richard Gere. Uh, impression. She does a great impression. I'm actually saving that. I'm going to ask her about that. That's kind of funny. <laughs> so, yeah, she's in Disney right now. I'm not sure which Disney, but she's in a Disney right now. So that'll be cool. I'll be talking to her about Disney, her trip, everything else. So it'll be cool. Yeah, excellent. So, but, excellent. But that's about my show. Let's get back to this show, which is not my show. This is Spencer's show. So, yeah, but you know, you know, we got to give props for props of Joe. I know, but I don't yeah, want to take absolutely. up the time on my show. You, you I'm a firm believer in that. You're you're on a good show. You're on a good show for sure, Shady. So I'm glad that you plugging that, especially helping out tonight and everything. So when you get your uh, your blog for Opposite World up or whatever, uh, if you if you post on Twitter, I'll retweet it for you because it's a better. I know that'll be interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll be up tomorrow. I'll be doing it tonight after. I watch the replay. I'm watching actually the opposite world now, but I have it muted, so I have to watch the replay later so I can actually hear the, what they're saying. <laughs> go shady, go shady, go shady, go shady. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, um, you know what I want to ask Spencer? Spencer, is there one BB episode of all time that is your favorite that you could just watch over and over again? Of all time. Uh yeah, I mean I guess the if I were to say are you said do you ask me did you say that I was not in or just any any BB episode ever? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like is there one episode of Big Brother where you remember like I remember one particular episode of all the years watching that I just couldn't believe what was happening and either I loved it or hated it, but it stuck in my mind forever. Is there one for you that was like that? I think we might have lost Spencer, but I'll, uh, while we get uh, try to get Spencer back, I I uh, will I will Hi, actually. I'm here. Okay, there I'm we go. Here. I'm here. My chin <laughs> pushed the button or something. But no, hey, what I was going to say was Andrew. Andrew's uh, his eviction speech when he busted out uh, Hayden. Uh, for the showman, I always thought that was good. That always sticks out as a good one. 
My favorite episode of all time probably is going to have to be episode 500 when uh, Amanda and Alyssa went, just, you know, partially for that to me. But before, uh, I always liked when Andrew, uh, you know, got up there and started doing his Captain Kosher thing and freaking, you know, just trying to bust Hayden out. I thought that was great. Did you say episode 500? Yeah, episode 500. That's, uh, that's, uh, there's day 77 in the house. That's the double eviction when Amanda and Alyssa went. Check you out. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of exterminator success right there. So that was, that was a pretty pretty big time big time day for me. And I won the HOA later that night. So. Well. Now what what about you, Shady? My uh, favorite episode. I'm sorry, it has to go back to, again. Big Brother Nine with Natty. Uh, it has to be uh, the, when she did the hide and seek game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, that woman can hide in the strangest and tiniest of places. It was just so funny, like how when she actually hid underneath a pile of towels, and she thought she was brilliant. She thought she was so uh, so brilliant and balanced that, not knowing that her knee was out of the towels and her knee yeah. could be seen. It was so. It was. Yeah. She, she's just such an amazing, uh, beautiful woman with such a kid kid like spirit, and it's yeah. just it was. Awesome to see that. I mean, I wish they did a high seat game in, on BB15 because imagine where would it Spencer been able to have hide hid? Dude, I couldn't. I couldn't hide anywhere. There's no way. Especially I was just thinking like that if I had to. Yeah. Like I guess it's possible I could have hidden under all uh, a man in my dirty clothes. But <laughs> but wouldn't you have passed out? Yeah, yeah, I guess that could have been uh, a little dangerous. Yeah. You know, I have to be honest here. Watching the season, part of my, the, my favorite thing to watch was Amanda and McRae laying around doing nothing, surrounded by the dirty clothes, than other things. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> not a lot of a lot, not a lot of initiative to uh, to, to tidy up anything uh, between those two. Well, you know what it was though. They were controlling the game. They were control. I it, to me, it was like the bed was like the control central, and they were controlling it. You know, for at least for the first half, I'm saying. And from there, it was just like everything was moving, and then obviously it didn't go to their direction. But to me, that's what you know. The first half of the season, my eyes went. Yeah. Well, that's one way to look at it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, let me just plug this show real quick, guys. If you want to call in, the number is three four seven three two seven nine one one four. Call in; we're having a great time. Call in, talk to Spencer, pick on Cammy. Uh, just come on in. It's a great show, great time, and let's get and keep the calls going. And Spencer, just so you know, you know what? You know I love you. But really, yeah, the first half, first half of the game, to me anyway, whether it was in the bed yeah. or whether they were in the whatever room they were in, you know, we'll just say bed, whatever. But to me, you know, they did control the first half. And it was it was so weird to me, like, watching them maneuver everybody. And then obviously the second half, things totally changed. That's all I meant by that. Yes. The second half was totally different. But, I mean, you also got to keep in mind that, what you say controlled the whole game. Moving company divided the house to, from the very beginning uh, when we sacrificed David because Jeremy wanted David gone uh, so he could have more control over Aaron, which he got. After that, Nick had to go uh, because of uh, the way McCray had already jumped out uh, of the moving company to go with some numbers that he felt more comfortable with. And uh, then so Nick went. And then obviously Jeremy was going to go the next week because Helen had him and her sights from the get-go. Like, so except the wine thing. You know, uh, Caitlin, I mean, like, the house is already divided. They just have to keep going on their checking list. What happened was Helen got all worked up about uh, certain people not making it to jury and stuff and getting so mad at Howard and me for playing Big Brother and being in the Moving Company Alliance. Oh, yeah. The plan changed. Yeah, the plan changed, and and, uh, and, and Howard and, and Candace are targeted before jury. But uh, all in all, like, the, the, as dumb as it sounds, the moving company set in motion what happened. Like, you know what, Spencer? I totally with, agree with you. If, if you didn't yeah. do certain things, if Howard didn't do certain things, that never would have happened. It was just from sitting there 
and watching it like unfold and like no one's getting Amanda out and no one's getting Amanda out and just from that perspective, yeah. obviously everything else had to fall into place or they have nothing. Sure, sure. I just don't remember. So, and, you know, I've, I've like talked to you. I've talked to you about what's that? I just didn't remember a Big Brother season like that where like. Every week it was like, this one's going, that one's going, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it was, it's uh, like the, yeah. I just, no, I know that you said there's, there's basically uh, like a hit list. And, I mean, like I said, once the house got divided, about the one thing that messed that up is, is Helen's uh, desire to get uh, to get Howard out. And then that spurred arguments between Amanda and Candace, which led Candace to get out. And, uh you know, but other than that, I mean, the moving company's plan was basically working, except for the fact that, you know, part of the moving company was eaten up, and the other part was left out in no man's land. So, and the only right. person that came out smelling like a rose was poor little McCray, who these four big, strong guys came up to and offered <laughs> to be in the alliance, and he had to, you know, at gunpoint, and he had to join. I mean, that's a, that's the BS story that, you know, he was feeding back everybody else to keep his butt safe. And brilliantly played. What else would you do? But at the same time, boy, he could have uh, he could have helped me out a little bit more than he did, you know. Right. But the uh, you know I, I really attribute the uh, you know the quote unquote the house how the vote how the house wants to vote the house that kind of stuff. That's uh, I believe that was dreamed up in, in Helen Kim's imagination. And uh, I tell you what, as annoying as that was all season. Uh, it really helped me out because once the quote unquote house was going one way, you know, all I had to do was <laughs> make sure they stayed that way. So. Well, not to interrupt Spencer, but we have a uh, caller on the line. We have Rick coming on the line, so let's bring Rick up. Rick. How's it going, Spencer? Hey, Rick. Good, what's up? Hey, hey guys. How are what's you? All up? Oh, I'm doing good tonight. I have a question for you, Spencer, and I promise I'll take it easy on you. I've been pretty rough throughout Big Brother 15. Hey, I got you. What you got, dog? Hang on. Who, if if there was to be an upcoming All-Stars in the near future, who for Big Brother 15 should be selected and why? Um, Besides yourself, I mean... um, Big, Big Brother 15. I mean, okay, okay. Like, let me. How many choices uh, does he get? First. Yeah, how many can I select? Three or four? Well, I'll just tell you what I think because this, that, a three, number's not necessary. To, and that's, a, well, a number's not necessary to put on it because I don't think I'd be able to pick four people uh, from the cast to be on All Stars. But uh, <clears throat> uh, obviously, very narcissistic. I'd like to see myself be on there. I mean, I do hold a Big Brother record. I mean, you know, being able to be on the block that many times and not be the target, I obviously had a good social game. Um, and, you know, I, I played strategy when I needed to. Uh, I formed an alliance. And I really, I was able to stay with basically my plan going into the house, as odd as it sounds, with the exception of being on the block all the time, if you watch some of my, my interest to interviews and stuff, you know, I formed an alliance. Uh, you know, I was able to do things towards the end with, with quote unquote floaters, which was the exterminators that so we were able to kind of take uh, control of the house. So I'd love to see myself on there because I'd have to play a completely different game than what I played the first time. Um, past that, uh, you know, Andy is honestly, I think, a great player. He would, too, would have to play a completely different game, but I think he's smart enough and physical enough and he, he's capable of doing that. And also, one thing that's really cool about Andy is Andy could probably do the exact same thing, and he's so fucking likable and good at what he does, he could probably get away with it again. And I would just like to see it put to the test again. Past that, uh, no, I mean, I would like to see. Okay, like my 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 wish list for for all for an all stars are people like okay, I'd like to see McCray. I'd like to see McCray's game minus Amanda. I would like to see what he could have done without her there because. You know, he played, like, after she left, he, he kicked ass. It was just too late for him. And, you know, before they really got together, he kicked ass. It was just too early for him. Um, oh, I so agree. I like McCray. So I guess part of my, my uh, all-star requirements would be that people that got to play like Frank. I want to see Frank Udi go in there and not be totally at a disadvantage because of his alignment with Mike, Mike Boogie. That was totally not by his choice, you know. Um, so that's kind of stuff I like to see on all-stars. I don't think anybody – I mean, I, I can't think of anybody else that would – 
we would, it would be on an honest to God all stars. Well, um, I, who I personally would love to see play the U.S. version of Big Brother again, and it's a travesty because it's never going to happen. Is Evil Dick? Uh, I, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Dick's awesome. Like I agree. Um, but you know, he had a chance and he fucking he left again. I mean, like I'm not talking about like I don't know what his personal situation was that came up. He didn't have a chance. I don't think his strategy. I don't think I would like to see him play. Uh, BB, he's he's got uh, uh, like Irish citizenship. I like to see him play BB UK celebrity. That's what I'd like to see. But I don't want to see him. I'd like to see him over there with uh, people that maybe have not seen his game. The problem with Big Brother is uh, like okay, Howard's a perfect example where uh, he's not doing a damn thing. But because they've seen fourteen other seasons, they think, oh my God, he's this mastermind. So like uh, you know, Dick being able to play season eight. He'd get away with some stuff that you probably couldn't get away with on season 15 for sure or season 16 for damn sure, whenever that plays out. Um, and so, yeah, Dick, I'd love to see him play again, but I'd like to see it on, a, on, like, on like, UK, something, uh, something a little different than America. I know you said uh, BBUS, so that's, that's why I don't know if I jumped in. Well, I want to jump in there and say two things. I never answered my favorite episode and oh. my favorite episode was part three of the HOH of Dick and Danielle. When Dick won the yeah. HOH, yeah. took Danielle. That, to me, was, like, one of the most memorable things. And the second I thing is, it. hey, Rick, I've been talking Hi. to Rick for a long time. I've never heard his voice, and you have a sexy voice, baby. Call me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm married, <laughs> so. <laughs> Damn, I'm Rick. married, so... <laughs> Man, maybe y'all can exchange some texts though. Uh, <laughs> hey, if, if that I, was, I want, charm, I want to clarify. I do. I I do want to clarify that Evil Dick is one of my all-time favorite players, and uh, but I don't. I don't think. I don't think that that he could be. He's another person that has to play a completely different game, and I don't know if he's capable of that. I'm not slighting him in any way. But like, okay, think of like Eric from season eight, America's player. He he was a wonderful game player, but hell, he was playing America's game, which you know. Also helped Dick out. I mean, like you can't say that uh, that Eric wasn't a huge reason that Evil Dick, Dick won the game in America's Player. Um, I'd like to see Eric be able to come in and play his own freaking game. I think he deserves that. So I'd love to see him like on All Stars. Well, I got a question for you, Spencer. I don't know if you can answer this or not. If we if it violates yeah. the contract, so if you don't, if you don't, if you can't, then don't. But okay. do you think us Big Brother bloggers? Kind of take out the di- take or overplay the diary room influence. Um, no, ask that again. Do you think that we that as as people who sit on Twitter and you know or like all oh, the feeds are down ten minutes and you know Grodner's doing you know this that and other? Do you think that we kind of take you know what production is doing to influence the game just a little bit too far? Or do you think that, you know... Oh, I see. I see, dude. Like, I know how the conspiracy theories about production influence in the way the game goes, and that's what you're asking about, and if I feel like the diary room does influence anything in the game. Um, I don't want to get you in yeah, trouble. I, I mean, I'm sure... What's the, yeah, no, 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 no. Because my answer is no. I mean, like, at least from my, my end of things, I was never told one thing that... Uh, reveal any secrets, anything I didn't know in the house. The production was very careful uh, with me to uh, not reveal stuff. You know, they would say, uh, okay, so tell us, like, when, when the exterminators formed, they would, you know, you'd have to say, well, what happened? Is there anything happened you want to talk about? You know, and they'd say, you know, are you hanging with any new people? Any kind of that kind of stuff. And you said, oh, yeah, you know, the exterminators, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd say, okay, well, who all is in that? And then you'd name them. And, you know, if you, if there was a, that way, that if you don't know something, they don't, the information to you. Um, that's for me. I can't speak about anything else. I mean, I would assume that it's it's uh, it's honest. I hope so. Um, but no, I mean, for my end, they never never once like fed me any kind of thing or suggested a strategy. Um, now, when you're in there, they, they you know you're you don't speak in sound bites. They're trying to kind of uh, flesh out some good sound bites from like what your honest thought process is. And uh, you know, sometimes you'll you'll say something. And they might have you look at it from like another point of view, you know. And but and that's they're just trying to build a narrative. I definitely don't feel like there's any kind of a, uh, you know, trying to influence influence the game. 
I mean, because really, unless it was so freaking direct that it established what they were hoping to achieve, um, I think that if you just tried to hint, it would create an opposite effect or a paranoia, you know, which might be good for the show too. But you know, it wouldn't. I don't know if they could absolutely, you know, uh, directly hit their target. If that's if that's uh, if you'll allow me to say that, um, right? It, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't think they could establish uh, or you know, accomplish their goal by like hinting and alluding to things. Um, they didn't flat out tell you, and I've never had any experience with anybody flat out telling me to do one thing or another. So, yeah, well, a lot of people on Twitter and whatnot say, "Oh, Grodner is you know his favorite is Amanda." Um, you know, they have that thing on um, social media saying, you know, just crazy like uh, Amanda was the predetermined winner for Big Brother 15. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, all like that. I, I, I saw a bunch of that stuff, but I mean, obviously she wasn't. You know, I mean, no, production obviously. knew knew what the exterminators were doing long, way long enough with the plan and everything, because we rehearsed everything basically, uh, so it would be very smooth. There's plenty of times that they could have, shit, they could have stuck a, you know, diamond tire veto in her bikini top. I mean, hell, they could have done something. So, well, I, I I'm particularly one of the Big Brother bloggers that don't buy into. All that production, this, that, and the other is influencing this. Yeah. I never have, but it's good to get it out there from somebody who's been on Big Brother that, you know, this doesn't happen. Uh, like, during Big Brother 14, there was a lot of speculation that Frank and Boogie got, you know, like an extra um, house guest choice ball. I don't know. Just yeah. speculation runs wild during the seasons. I have one more question, and I don't mean to hold up yeah. the show. Alyssa to me Yvonne? is a Alyssa to me is a very particular. She's very. Oh, let's see how can I put this. Um, very Alyssa. <laughs> she's she's a very <laughs> unique person. Um, do you find that she? Did, I, one thing that bothered me with her being on Big Brother 15 was the fact that, you know, she would like whine about, you know, she didn't want to go to jury. Was that Alyssa was was that just gameplay or did Alyssa actually was that miserable in the house? I, I totally from watching the live scenes as much as I do, I find that Alyssa that Alyssa found herself to be miserable. Uh like, okay, yeah. Um I would I would agree to that. Um in in the house Alyssa, I do feel like, was miserable. I don't think that, uh, you know, I mean, none of us are accustomed to uh, being in those type of living situations, but I think it was a lot more foreign uh, to her, who has a lot more luxurious lifestyle than, like, you know, say I do. I mean, for me, sitting around on the couch all day and, you know, bullshit with somebody, there's a little bit more than around with things that I, I would do. And and, and her is a, is a very busy woman, you know, that's not. And I do truly think that she was miserable in the house. I don't think that. Um, she was she was pretty aloof in the house, and it didn't allow for a lot of uh, good relationships to form, uh, you know, with, with the exception of Helen. And to be honest yeah. with you, I do not know what in the world those two would sit around and talk about. I've never watched any of the live feeds, but I can just imagine it's just, you know, awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, she, yeah, she was miserable. I don't know. There was absolutely no part of that, I believe, in the gameplay. I think that... Um, I think that she wanted to. I didn't. She did not want to go to the jury house. In fact, there's a plan at the beginning uh, of the game that she was going to stay in up until the point that she, uh, the, the last jury, you know, the last person to go before jury, because uh, so, she didn't want to be sequestered. Uh, she wanted to go then, so she could go. So she, her son was going to start school, and she wanted to be there for the first day of school with him. And uh, you know, she wanted to self evict some just due to being miserable in the house. Uh, but no, there's none of that was gameplay. I think that was just out of pure misery in the house. Well, I, I see as being selected to be on Big Brother and a lot of people who blog like I do that it's a privilege to be in the game, and, and that's what I would not agree more. Bothered. And it's a privilege to be in that house, and it's a privilege to be in the game. And you played the game, and despite that one little comment that you threw a big uproar on Twitter, you, you're pretty good. I, I I liked you. So, I mean, that's all Thank that you. matters to me. <laughs> oh, I think that's Rick, all I got. I'm not going to grill. I'm sure, sure going to be coming up on, on future episodes, Rick, but you want to plug all your stuff? You've got a lot of stuff. 
Tell everybody oh, how to find uh, you. Oh, before Spencer gets mad at me, no, I'm just picking, dude. You, you got a really good sense of humor. Um, I'm oh, man, no, you're cool. I, I'm the dude who runs the Big Brother Report, Love Me, Hate Me, uh, tbbr.us, um, <laughs> my site. And I run the Big Brother Report Canada. I'm on Twitter. You can find me. So I'm, I'm everywhere but, in the Big Brother community. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, dude, you said that uh, I was going to start hating on you. No, man, I tell you, I... Uh, Anybody, I appreciate you. You say that you that you like me and you watch the feeds and stuff. I, uh, you know, you said with the exception of the uh, the one little thing that got people in an uproar. Uh, you know, that's. Uh, I mean, I can't wait till that's uh, totally forgotten about. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like how many, Lord? I mean, how many bad jokes can you can a man have held over his head for that long? Man, I had so. every Big Brother blogger I possibly know message me when that was said. And I'm, I'm not going to mention it because everybody well, makes mistakes, Spencer. And well, everybody... it's, like, it's like this, what I would like to know. What, what I would like to know is what people are sitting on the computer and they're like, my God, that son of a bitch is serious. You know what I'm saying? Like who, what what person was sitting around doing that? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure that anybody that actually saw that and thought that I was you know, my God, that some bitch is, is confessing right there hearing, you know. Like, whoever thought that would have to be, you know, not even qualified to be able to turn on a computer. So I can't imagine anybody that would be able to blog that. You'd think that somebody would have been like, man, Spencer's just being a goober today. You know what I'm saying? I, but that's not how I, I got it. I feel like it. I was the only one that took it as a joke. I, I can't well, control like, what goes on on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Lord, Lord, I know if you were the person to control that. But, uh, but yeah, I was, I, you know, when I got out of the house, it's really funny because when I got asked for finale, they just took me away to this room with all the security around me. And I was sitting there, you know, wanting to get to the after party. And I was like, oh my God, I'm out of the fucking house. I was like, free. And I was running, looking like just a madman. And they sent me down. Yeah. And they brought all these, like, public relations people in. And they were like, well, this, this cast has been controversial. And there's been all this, you know, you don't know about Paula Dean and George Zimmerman. And I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, did I say anything about race? They were like, no, you didn't say anything about race comments, but do you remember when you got McCray's microphone in the shower? I go, oh, my God, is this about when I said I like to finger dogs' buttholes? And they go, no, <laughs> no, not at all. And, uh, and anyway, I was like, well, what are you talking about? And they said, you said that you like, you know, like uh, uh, beating off little boys or whatever. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, that was a joke. Like, it's one of the things, like, when I said it, like, I didn't even, like, think about it again until – like freaking a month later when they were talking to me about it. And I thought that I was under in trouble because I said it like the finger dogs' buttholes. So you can imagine how surprised I was at that news. Yeah. That, that comment got taken, you know, so freaking serious. I mean, you know, like Andy, now there's a, there's a you can find on YouTube a clip from, I don't know what it's from, but I don't know if it was on Ashley Dark, it's live feed. We were sitting around talking about how we blow our children up they don't mind us because the brains have been tainted by this modern influence of radio. You know, it was like people watch that and they're like, this is fucking funny. They're so funny, the deadpan, they laugh, all this kind of stuff. But then you make another joke deadpan, and it's like, well, hell, this son of a bitch needs to be run off. You know, and it's just ridiculous. Well, Spencer, I believe that Big Brother, by the time the, the anger on Twitter kept building up with what happened with Aaron and then what would happen with Alyssa. And by the time that it finally got to what you said, people were, were so angry and riled up because of all the, you know, stupid things Aaron said and all the sure, stupid things sure. that happened. Oh, no, dude. That wow. It just totally got blown out of proportion. And, I, completely, and that's what I completely believe that Aaron pulled and, the microscope down in on us, and then everything else was just, was just you know, open for, for ridicule. So... By that point, you had TMZ, you know, websites like TMZ going after, you know, personal stuff. And, and, and the, the Big Brother community needs to rein itself in. We don't need to be getting people fired from their jobs over something that's said on television. And, you know, Twitter, it's just, it, it, it was just a mess the entire season. And uh, I really wish that you were on a different season. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, so. like, my thing was, like, freaking like fuck this, dude. I think I'm likable. I'm a nice guy. Anybody that watches the live feed and that, that gets my sense of humor, like, I know that super, like, mm-hmm. I've never gotten along with super, super sensitive people, you know, so, like, some of my humor is going to be a little bit more abrasive and crass uh, than what you, what some people are comfortable with. 
But I really I do appreciate the people that watch it, give my sense of humor, and know that at heart, I'm just really a lighthearted guy. That you know, I love my girlfriend, I love my dogs. You know, I'm really quite happy with my simple life. Aww. I didn't get on the show to get famous and try to sell everybody a bunch of bullshit after the after the program wraps. You know, I just wanted to go in there, chase a dream, do the very best that I could, and uh, you know, try to win the damn thing. And I made the third. I get out. I'm so fucking excited. I think I've just conquered the world. And they say, well, everybody hates your fucking cast, and you made a pedophile joke that rubbed everybody the wrong way, and your own fucking city newspaper doesn't want to do a story about you, and your family is embarrassed because they don't understand that they think everybody in the entire world watches Big Brother, and that these negative opinions are the opinions of the rest of the God-fearing world. I mean, like, that kind of stuff sucks. And then they, you know, people try to actively get me fired from my job, the only normal thing I could come back to. And, uh, you know, it's yeah, it's totally unfair. It's total bullshit. There's so a, you know what? Season. Talking to Spencer There's all this time, that's who Spencer is. He loves his girlfriend. He loves yep. his dog. He's human. He makes errors. He's he's a good guy. Yep. There's a difference between the character that you played on a reality TV show and the person you are. And there's a lot of people who can't separate that. And I think you're a good dude, Spencer, and I don't want to take up too much of y'all's show, but I really appreciate you answering me answering my questions about Big Brother 15, and I just get leery of what's going on sometimes when the fish are on the screen for more than five minutes. That, that's yeah. That, that's just that's just you know well, every Big Brother bloggers. Um, hey, um, hey, I'll tell you, I'll on? tell you what. The new thing they cut out, they cut the fish anytime medication is talked about. House guest medication, um, anytime. Amanda's stuff about whether Howard said this or that or the other thing to her, they went to fishes on that. So, like, they picked a lot of things, I think, to keep uh, uh, booted house guest reputations clean after the episode since there's so many negative things going on. But a lot of the cutting yeah. of fish, I think, were when we were talking about uh, uh, previously evicted house guests. So that might uh, probably have fueled a little bit of the conversation. We're going to have too. to cut it because so, I see another caller. But I want to yep. do a shout-out to Rick. Rick, thanks for all your help. Uh, Rick, welcome, Rick, no Rick's been a, a big help, everybody. And I want to ask you yeah. one quick question, Thanks, Rick. Rick. Ready? Uh huh. If you had a chance, would you go to Candyland? Um. Oh God, she's Miss Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Louisiana. Yes or no? Uh, <laughs> um, you should. Hurry up. N- n- no. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, well, Rick. All right. Take care. All right, guys. We have a special caller coming on the line. Let's see if you oh, recognize the voice. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's Hello? see if you recognize who it is. Hello? You, yep, you're on the air. I, I'm on the air? Yes, you Spencer, are. Spencer, you're a racist. Hello? It's Hello? Hello? I'm, I'm a... <laughs> How's it going, Spencer? How's it going, guys? You didn't give my donation to the Rainbow Push Coalition. That's the person I donated money to when I got out of the house. He's a terrorist. <laughs> um, all right, I've got a real question. All right, real question. Do you think real question, real deal, right now? Do you think okay. that? All right, so they say life imitates art, art imitates life. Do you think that okay. Big Brother House imitates the American population? Or does the American population imitate the house? Uh, McCray, that's an excellent question. I would say uh, neither. I would say that the Big Brother house uh, is a very good reflection of young 20-somethings that are trying to get on reality TV shows. <laughs> I would say that's a far cry from the real demographic of, uh, of the nation. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. No, I mean, Fair enough. I thought I thought Big Brother was uh, supposed to be about social truths and um, the search for knowledge. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's the way I feel about Big Brother. I think it's uh, no, dude, you know, you're it's, totally wrong. You're, you're totally <laughs> wrong. You're totally wrong. It's it's about it's it's about going on there in order to get famous. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, you're on exactly. there and, and you. You figure out you've got about as much fame as you need. You uh, yeah. you throw your parachute out. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so. all right. Well, uh, that's a good answer. Well, that's a good answer to a tough question. Yeah, good. But stay on the line, sir. I'd like for you okay. to uh, to continue this line of, line of thinking here with us. 
So uh, actually, <laughs> earlier we were saying we were said that uh, a question was asked: if anybody from Big Brother 15 could be on All Stars, who would it be and why? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I just started catching I that. I said, on, did you hear that? I didn't hear what you said. I heard my name thrown around a little bit, and I'm guessing that yeah, it was in the yeah. context of that motherfucker will never go on. All no. Time. Oh, so you, so you did hear it. You, you, you did hear it. Okay. All right. Well, then I don't need to repeat myself. But <laughs> no, no. Uh, I was just basically saying probably fucking nobody, to be honest with yeah. you. But yeah. if if I had to, if I had to pick any three three people to be on it to be on uh, yeah. All Stars. It would be uh, it'd be no ma'am. It'd be me, you, and Andy. Uh, Hell yeah, no ma'am, baby. I'm a narcissistic. Uh, yeah, I'm a, yeah, exactly. Me because I'm a narcissistic asshole, and obviously I like to get it again. But you know, I didn't get to play the game. I didn't get to play exactly the game I wanted to play going in because after yeah. you know you fucked up the moving company, then I yeah. uh, you know I was kind of out in no man's land. I didn't have anything I could really do, and I just had yeah. to fucking be the cool guy you want to keep around, you know. And yeah. until the, like you know, part of my plan was I'd always tell people. You know, yeah, whenever you're ready to get a man down, you come get me. You know, you, you'd always have to say yeah, something yeah. game. And, and then they're like, the target before. And Who's I was that? thinking about it, and I was like, I would like to see, I would definitely like to see you on All Stars. Just because, like, the way that, like, you're so, like, personable. Like, the way that we, like, I was talking to Judd about how me and you would steal beers or whatever. You know, like, yeah. just you. And then Judd was like, oh, yeah, he kind of did that for me one time, too, or whatever. But I was thinking about it, and yeah. I was thinking, like, if you think about that from a game perspective, like, that's building a valuable, yeah. like, friendship, you know, between us because you're like, I'm in on this secret, you're in on this secret, you know, and then, like, I automatically feel a bond towards you. I just think that, like, yeah. that's actually very good gameplay. Like, it really is, and that's, a, that's the reason why, that, for that reason, that's the reason why I want to see you play again. I don't know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did you notice I didn't even start drinking? I didn't have one beer until Judd got evicted. And then I yep. knew that it would be important for me to be your drinking buddy after that. Yep. So I just went with Mr. Smart. Beer Drinker. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I had to. Because Amanda yeah. would never trust me, but you would. So I had to make sure I was always in good with you. Exactly. So. <laughs> you, my friend, are another, definitely I a good game see. player. What's that? I said, you, my friend, are definitely a good game player. Oh, thank you. Thank you, dude. I, I would see. The reason I said I'd like to see you in the All-Stars is because, like, I would love to see your game minus Amanda. I mean, you know, like, yeah. no no slap to her, but dude, like, yeah. a fucking McCray off the leash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly. Dude, yeah, like, you're unchained. fucking, like, dude, okay, honestly, like, you put, like, single McCray in the house, dude, you win, yeah. you won, like, 90% of the competition <laughs> playing yeah. a single McCray you played in. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm just pretty proud of that fact for you, and uh, <laughs> I just yeah. kind of like to see what, what would happen. What would happen if you get in there? You know, without your yeah. uh, meat chills. Yeah, definitely. So, oh, thank you. I think. Oh I'm my God! How many times fast. did we hear that meat shield? What is meat shield? <laughs> yeah, how many times did you say that meat shield? Meat shield. Yeah, he kept saying it. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Meat shield. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, all right. I better go. Getting yeah. No one wants to listen to us stroke each other off. So yes, they do. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. no, we really don't. <laughs> Wait, what yeah, was my that? Question for you. I'm going to ask you a question yeah. when I ask the last caller. Let's okay. pretend you went into the Big Brother house and you were alone. You were single last year. Yeah. Would you have went Wait, to Candyland? What? Would I go to Candyland? Yes. I mean, I went to. I was the first person. I was the original person to go to Candyland. She's talking about. She's <laughs> talking about Candyland. Would you go there? I, I don't. I think yes. I don't know. I I feel like I'm not uh, picking up these contextual clues, but I'm going straight to Candyland. I'm all about the Candyland. I'm going right, head first. I'm going head first into Candyland, baby. Well, there's your answer. That's kind of. Hey, you know that's that's kind of how I felt about it. You know, if I'd have, yeah. if I'd have gone in, gone in as a single man, uh, I, I would have just you know that's what I'd have done. I think just that uh, face first. Span, as I think that, I think that Spandex could have been one of the greater showmances in Big Brother history, but you know, oh, yeah. yeah. Our yeah, next call is going to be Candace or Amanda. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Christ. Hey, uh, hey, McCray, you can verify this. Uh, 
one of the funniest things I like to pick on Amanda in the house is I would tell yeah. her that, Cal, uh, that Howard and Candace got to do joint PRs when yes. Amanda and McCray never got to do one yet, and it would piss yeah. her off so bad. <laughs> she she was so, so upset. Like you, I would imagine her head just exploding every time you told her that. Like she would just yeah. go crazy. I think like you could see the fire behind her eyes. Like and it was such a good joke <laughs> yeah. because like you and Andy were so serious about it. Like oh yeah, totally. And like yeah. she would go nuts. Like. That killed her deep inside. It was so funny. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. Classic. Because the only person yeah. you ever did a joint DR with was when you were uh, friendship Gina Marie. up to Gina Marie. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, was, the was, only, that was the only joint DR. But, oh, man, yeah, and that one was just, ah, uh, that was horrible. That, that yeah, hurt me I, deep I, down inside to do that one. Uh, McCray, somebody asked me the other day if I could if I could rewatch any clip uh, from the whole season, what would it be? And I said yeah. that when uh, Andy... Andy, me, and McCray went into the dining room together to ask for more alcohol. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that—that that is. I want them to release that footage. Like, I want them to release yeah. that so bad. Like us just like giggling, like stupidly, like. Oh my yeah. god, <laughs> we were just looking. That was great. Oh, that yeah. was so and much Andy, fun. Andy that is like, something. And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, guys, I'm a teacher. I've got this. And he's yeah, like, yeah. I respectfully request alcohol. And he's all yeah, yeah. I like how he got all professional and stuff. He's like, no, I got this. I know how to do this. I do this all the time. Yeah. And the producer's yeah, like, you're exactly. a fucking idiot. Like, you are the dumbest <laughs> bastard ever. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So. All right. Well, well McCray, thanks I, uh, for coming in, dude. Yeah, I'm thanks enjoying McCray. the show. Yeah, I'm loving it, guys. Yep, Keep yeah. up the good work. Yep. Hey, have a good one. Bye bye, guys. Yep, bye, dude. We'll talk tomorrow. Hey. Bye bye. <laughs> that was so cool, McCray calls in. Thank you, McCray. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, God. Uh, uh, who do I need to fire for, for not screening the phone calls better? <laughs> hey, I, I knew who that was. <laughs> so well, I knew who that was. Well, that's why I said well, a very special caller. Know. Yeah, that was yeah, great. Dude. I, that I was love great. talking to him. We we call each other back and forth to like funny ideas and just funny things and man, I tell you, well, one of the one of the uh honest to God, like one of the coolest, best things that I walked away with this whole summer was uh friendship in the Christ. He's a really good well, guy. Well so, I tell you, you two start he, talking, it's like you gotta step back, it's like you talk your own language. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we communicate pretty quick with each other. I mean when you live with somebody that long and McCray and I, are really, man, we're really on the same wavelength on a lot of things. So it's like I don't have to contextualize something. Like I can say something, so can he. And, like, we understand what realm it's meant. And uh, that's that's a lot of fun when you find somebody that you can uh, talk about and force of like that, too. So. Well, you might also want to explain to him tomorrow what he answered when, he, when you were talking about Candyland. You might want to explain that to him. Because I really don't think <laughs> he actually knew what he was answering. I, I, think, I think he got it at the end. All right. <laughs> okay, and hey, did y'all see? Did y'all see Candace on uh, Young and the Restless? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, wasn't I'm she fantastic? Keep quiet about yes, it. she I'm was. Keep quiet, whether or not I thought he knew. <laughs> I, I swear, yeah. our next caller is going to be Amanda or Candace. It really is. It won't be Candace. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I don't think that she wants to talk to me much. But uh, I, I think it'll be Amanda it. then. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. It's all but, in good uh, fun. But no, I know. I know. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm saying absolutely. that in a joking way. You know, I think, like I said, Candace, man, she's she's doing great. I'd like to see her. I'd, I'd be tickled if Young and Restless would find her a permanent spot. You know, she had that. That she would be cool. cool. She was a real estate agent, you know. So, um, you know, if she could be in there, Lord, she could find a dead body. She could walk in on the show a house. I mean, I'd like to see something like an ongoing cameo with her. You could, all, you could play you could, you could play a real estate agent to walk into so many different situations or, you know, just uh, – you know, weird. You, there's all sorts of ways you can write, write that kind of character into a, into a, a you know, a right. scripted yeah, I soap opera. And I think Candace, I think people, Candace would be fantastic. Uh, you know, what's that? I think a lot of people will go to Candyland. Absolutely, and you know, I, mean, I tell she's you, a I think beautiful that, uh, girl. Yes, she yeah, is. Yeah, she is. You know, the uh, I think I've read that the Young and the Restless is having having trouble uh, capturing the demographics they're looking for. And uh, I can't remember whether major competition was General Hospital or something. Yeah, know. General Hospital is a major uh, competition because Weiner yeah, is a pl- well, their producer, and, and Joe Farron Phelps is yeah, not, probably the worst producer 
in the history of soaps. Yeah, well, see, I don't know anything about that. Like, I just read an article when I saw that she was going to be on it. I want to kind of see what what it was up to, you know. And um, anyway, like, man, yeah, if they're trying to change your demographic, I think the Candace, you know, well represents a large block of people. And, you know, if they put her on there in a little bit bigger role, I bet some, some viewership would go up. I, you know, I certainly would watch it more. I've only watched Young and the Rest of I think one time in my entire life, and that's because Candace Stewart was on it. So, you know, Lord, might as well throw her back on there a few more times. I'll watch. Yeah. I will see. I'm an avid GH fan, so that's why I only watched YNR when Candace was on there. I only watched Both More Than Beautiful when Alyssa, Rachel, Howard, all of them were on there. Yeah. Yeah. How many episodes was, was Alyssa on? Three or two? Uh, three or four. Because she was. Really? Was, I, heard, I thought. See, I thought it was only going to be like two episodes, so it's all a DVR. Um, and I only think I saw her twice. I think she was on two episodes that I didn't get to see. I'm going to have to try. I'm sure I can find them on, on the Internet. Yeah, because even when she isn't in, like, talking, she's in the background. You can see her and Rachel shopping. Oh, cool. Cool. Right on. Right on. We're good. Good deal. Good deal. I'm glad to hear that. So, but then, you know, would you, you ever? What, I, well, what were you about to say to me, dude? I was going to ask you, would you ever do a soap like G.H. Bowling and Beautiful? Yeah, shit, yeah, shit, yeah. See, I've invented my own soap character already. When I was in the, when I was in the Big Brother house, McCray and I, this is something we talked about all the time, is that I'd be like a, like a, like a redneck janitor or something like that. It's like a grand no, Spencer, I you can see you I, like, I, I can see you like in a dream sequence. Totally, totally. I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely you know what I mean? a dream sequence. A dream sequence, oh, maybe yeah, you're a Confederate I'm, I'm, officer. A what? A Confederate officer? No, no. Yeah, listen, I think the last thing I didn't need to be attached to is a Confederate officer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I could definitely see. Okay, I wanted to be like a groundskeeper, somebody that like you know hung around these rich fuckers and like came in like just goofy things for them, acted like I was really doing them a favor, you know. And uh, <laughs> so like one thing, like I would like I had a catchphrase. It would be uh, it was free of charge. And so what I'd do is I'd come in and I'd say. Oh, hey, bud, I noticed it's starting to rain, and I roll up the windows on your porch. Free of charge. <laughs> like that, and I'd, I'd just walk, I'd exit the scene. And so, like, every once in a while, just this goofy-ass redneck would pop up that said he did something, you know, to hook up a main character. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, yeah, guys, we have another uh, caller in the air, and this and this is definitely uh, it. Well, I mean, he needs no interruption. Oh, Lord Jesus. You're on the air. Hi, my question is for Spencer. Um, how did you feel when that floater rat bastard Andy decided to eliminate you at the end and take Gina Marie instead? <laughs> mm, you know, I knew that that scumbag piece of shit was yeah. about the sorriest low life form that ever has walked the planet. And I knew oh, America, America agreed ways. with you. He was the worst. I hated him. I, 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 hey, listen to me, caller. I'm the voice of America, so I, yeah. I know... I know what's going on here. Um, and he was the in true form of the biggest piece of shit that's ever walked the planet. He did, uh, you know, and I know it broke his poor little heart to evict me, and sadly he did. Uh, and I can tell you exactly what was going through my mind. I was thinking, you know, I wonder what would happen with Julie Chin would do if I just monkey stopped this motherfucker right now in the living room of the Big Brother house. But, uh, you know, I didn't do that, you know, because in, 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 it is just a game after all. Yeah, no, well, I mean, it is a game, but I think I speak for most of America when I say that I wish you would have just killed him. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I checked the storage room right before the live episode. Oh, I love and that. And I'd requested, yeah. that I, I requested that they put my pistol in there. And when I checked right before the live episode, they still hadn't done that. If I'd only had that, well, no, no. I if you watched the feed, if him. you watched the feed, he knew. He knew that you had requested a pistol, and he snuck in there and got it out. He was such a little rat. <laughs> he already knew. Like, we saw it on the feed. He got your pistol out of there. Yeah. Oh my God! Uh, you know I uh, I believe it 100. percent So yeah. if uh, if that sneaky bastard, you know I'm planning to go to Chicago in March, and if I go through his shit like I'm planning to, and I find uh, you know my my pistol all fingerprinted up with Astro Lube, I'm gonna raise hell. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so, no, I think I think that you should definitely. <laughs> yeah, I will. Because that that was yeah. passed down from my pappy. That was my grandpappy's pistol. He carried okay. that with him in the Great War, and uh, oh, it's going to wow. be very crucial I get that back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a relic. <laughs> how are you, asshole? I'm good. How are you doing, sweetie? 
Oh, not too bad at all, my angel. Um, I just I heard that you were doing this interview, and I had to call in and ruin it in some way and steal the attention away from you and put it on me. So. Thank you so Andy, much. it's Tammy. Can I play a quick game with you? Can you what? Can I play a quick game with you? Oh, of course. Beautiful. Okay, the name of the game is called Go On One Date, Make Out in the Diary Room, or Throw okay. in the Dumpster. Okay. Got and it. your three choices are <laughs> McCray, <laughs> Judd, and Spencer. Okay. Um, I am going to, ju- uh, just because fuck Judd, I'm for sure going to throw Judd in the dumpster. Um <laughs> And then oh, I would probably I would probably go out on a date with Spencer because he's oh. a much better he's a better conversationalist um, than McRae who doesn't speak really. And then I would make out with McRae because he obvi- I mean I obviously had a crush on him all summer so I finally right. lived my dream and I would make out with McRae. Oh, that's cool! Thank cool. you yeah. for playing. But that's tough. You're I, you're I mean you just asked me like my three favorite guys in the house so that was tough. I mean just. I want I want everyone listening to know that it's tough to throw Judd in the dumpster. You know, I'm not happy that I have to do it. <laughs> like, if you would have said, like, throw Nick in the dumpster, who gives a shit? You know, I would have done that. In <laughs> Toss him in there. Yeah, yeah, stack him up. Well, hey, I got a question for you, Andy, while you're on the phone. Oh, yes, ask away. <laughs> okay, this is a question. I I've, I've never Andy. asked you this question before. I've never asked you this question before. <clears throat> okay. In a snake fight, what? Mm-hmm. No, I'm teasing. What? Uh, why didn't you take me to the final two? Uh, wait, I'm so sorry. What about a snake fight in the final two? <laughs> <laughs> what if what if that child? What if that child? The final, the winner was established if you had the snake fight. Uh, well, you remember with, we were... between, I mean, I would have taken you because I don't think I don't think that, that I would have survived against Gina Marie's numerous clip piercings. Um, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Damn it! If only they re- had rewritten the rules to say that, <laughs> that it was determined by snake fighting. <laughs> so, no, like, uh, like, what was your what was your thought process in taking Gina Marie over me? What was what? Oh, your thought, thought process. process just Gina Marie over you. Yeah. I mean, I'll be real. Like, I, I mean, I really loved both of you, and I want. I mean, I really didn't care between the two of you who got the fifty grand. I was very happy that either one of you was going to get it. But I thought, I mean, I ran through every possible scenario in my head, and I genuinely didn't think that Gina Marie had played as strong of a game as you or could argue as strong of a point as you. Like, in my head, I thought yeah. you were going to get to the end if I took you, and you would have said something along the lines of, like, I was always on the bottom. I always had to fight my way through. I lost all my allies at first, and I still made it as far as Andy, who was kind of on the end all the time. You know, he always yeah. knew what was up. Sure. And the fact that I Which... made it as far as him – and I had to fight a lot harder than he did, is pretty is, is impressive, you know? I mean, I thought that you could have argued that, and I did not Which want I would to have. give you a chance to argue that. So, and then yeah. I also knew, I mean, I love, everyone knows how much I love Gina Marie, but, like, we all heard some of Gina Marie's speeches in the house saying, like, they did not go over the best with some people that were on the jury. You know, I'm saying, like, Judd and Melissa, like, laughing and things like that, and Candace, like, true, I knew that, like, true. I knew that I thought I could do better than her in the jury question and answer segment, but I was also happy to take her because I was happy for her to get the money and for you to get fucked and have to leave at the last possible <laughs> minute. So thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. All the yeah. experience, all the experience, and none of the money. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, and exactly. That's. I mean, you would you would say all the time that you came for the experience. So I figured I'd give you what yeah. you wanted, get the experience, and then like without. I mean, you, like, oh my yeah. God! I think Andy I, is my new favorite house guest. Oh, stop. You're, you're, you're the one person in the world that thinks that, but that's my mother. All right, I don't know. Uh, so, Andy, we only have 50 seconds left. Okay. Andy, thank you for calling, love. Oh, I'm so happy I was able to take all the attention away from Spencer at the end. All right. <laughs> bye, bye, everyone. Have a great Andy, bye. Andy, before you leave, this is not I'm, Spencer's interview. This is Spencer's show, so you might have to call in every week. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, yep, I'm going to. I'm, all right. Bye, I'm just, Andy. I'm just surprised. Bye. I'm just surprised he's sober. Okay, real quick, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the first show on Get Real LOL. It's been amazing. McCray, Andy, all the callers, thank you to Spencer. Thank you to Shady for all your help. I hope you enjoyed the show. You guys want to say bye? you got 10 seconds. Right. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate everybody listening. 
Thanks for all the calls and the questions. It was fun. We'll do it again. Thanks for getting real, everybody. Bye. Bye.